Good afternoon, St. Londres. How are you? We hope that you are well. Is this not one of the best looking dogs you've ever seen? I'm not really one for complimenting dogs and babies or whatever. you. As far as I'm concerned, people, oh, they exaggerate. You know, all babies are reasonably beautiful, which means that the average is, you know, when people say, oh, isn't that, isn't that the most beautiful baby? I think, no. Um, and it's the same with puppies. I'm not one to gush over puppies, but this one, and she's not very photogenic, I must say. She doesn't look nearly as beautiful uh, uh, in the camera as she does um, in real life. Her name is Rosie. She is one of the six puppies that uh, Louis Hutton's dogs gave my bitch Bella. Uh, I think it's two different fathers. You know, uh, dogs uh, uh, can, uh, uh, a bitch can carry litters, a, a litter from multiple fathers. Um, she had six, three of them definitely from Louis' Belgian Malinois. And I think three from his sheepdog. I thought that they, the other three might have been from Mr. one of Mr. Miller's dogs. <coughs> but now I don't believe so. Um, and yeah, uh, I'm going to keep her and I'm going to keep the biggest, oldest one. Because he, he took to me right from the beginning. Uh, he wants to, you know, stay here. Um, um, John and Narina took what I believe to be definitively the best of the dogs, um, which was the second born one. Um, and Louis Hutton will, uh, this is quite an interesting thing. Louis said to me that he wants, you know, the, the tradition is that the, that the owner of the dog, of the sire, uh, get first choice. So uh, I gave him first choice and he, he said to me, I want the smallest, weakest, I want the runt of the litter. And I said to him, oh, man, Louis, come on. And uh, he said to me, I'm telling you, it will end up being the dog uh, that is best for me. And, you know, Louis hunts um, a lot with dogs to control the, the vermin on his farm. Hunts uh, 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 Roycat and uh, Royakals and that, that sort of thing. And uh, he has this dog. Let me pick him up and show you. Just hold on. Come here. Sorry about that, guys. And my, my video editing skills are, are such that I'm not going to chop that out. Uh, but he, look at this guy. You can't see it clearly. But uh, in fact, both of his eyes are light blue. Completely light blue. Um, and so that was the runt of the litter. And Louis said to me that it'll turn out to be the best dog for my purposes. You know, he hunts and he needs dogs with spirit and courage and what have you. And, and um, I thought that he'd made a big mistake. But just as with almost every occasion that I've disagreed with Louis, I've been wrong and he's been right. And it's, a, it's not a, like a, you know, that I think that I know better. I know full well that uh, a man who farms, uh, who began with 300 hectares and now has 35,000 hectares, or had, he's got rid of some, uh, or farms on, I should say, farms on 35,000 hectares, knows a thing or two about animals and farming. But it just seemed so conspicuous to me, so indisputable, that this dog was such a runt, that he would never amount to anything. So it wasn't that I thought I knew better than Louis. It just seemed so obvious. The day before yesterday, I fed all of the dogs, the four of the six that I still have, and my two, uh, the ones that I had before, the two older dogs. 
And this guy stole the food of every single dog three times and stole the food of one of the dogs once. And he fought all of them once or twice. And the, on the third and fourth occasions of each of them having their food stolen by him, none of them put up a fight. So he turned over all of the dogs, if you can believe that. And he put up such a fight against his own mother that, as I say, on the, on the second, third, and fourth, or third and fourth occasions, she didn't even resist him. He is a monster. He is an absolute monster. And he, just, he looks just like my dog that died, died of cat flu, whose name was Stephanus Johannes Polis. Yes, you look like Stephanus Johannes Polis. Mm. Stephanus Johannes Polis was named for Paul Creer because when I was ill at, at Louis' house, uh, co coincidentally, I felt very, very ill. And I had to spend three days in bed. So I got a whole lot of books. His dad's old books. And I read books in bed for three days. And I read the whole of Paul Creer's memoirs. <coughs> and there's an anecdote in there. He, he talks about hunting lions with his dog, Macy. And uh, how this dog used to antagonize the lions, a little Jack Russell. And she used to go closer and closer and closer and closer and closer and closer until the lion was confident that it could catch her. And the lion would leap at her and she would then run away or try to run away. And Paul Creer had to kill the lion before it landed on top of her. He had to shoot it. And he said, if I remember correctly, that uh, he killed five lions in that manner, alone, without hunting companions, just with Macy. Which is, what an achievement. Unbelievable. Um, and he goes on to say, of course, I killed many, many more lions in different ways and with other people. Uh, so... I named Polis, who was the spitting image of this dog, for Paul Creer. And um, sadly, he died, but he also had spirit. And again, it was actually Louis who picked up on it. Louis, I said, uh, Louis uh, uh, offered me a dog. And I said, I, I don't want, unless it's a, a male and it's really got spirit, I don't want a lap dog, a kissy kissy dog, uh, good for nothing. Uh, it must be a dog that is just born to hunt and to be a guard dog, to replace Casimir that the black kids across the road uh, killed. Or whose death was caused by the kids across the road when they called him into the road one night. Um, and he got run over, little knowing that I was watching the whole thing because they've been doing it the whole evening not long. And I tried to stop it on three or four occasions, but they just kept doing it anyway. So I needed a replacement for Kasumi. I've got Polis. Uh, and now Louis is going to have this dog. But I've got two of the other dogs. Rosie, the one I was showing you uh, at first. And I think that she's going to be a superstar. I, I just have a good feeling about her. Let's see. And then I've got the, the firstborn, Tiger. I have a feeling, oh dear me, that he's going to be useless. He, he doesn't have fight in him. But as Louis told me recently, you must give the dog at least a year and a half, between a year and a half and two years. Prior to a year and a half, you don't know for dead certain what the finished product is going to be. After two years, there's no ways you can improve it. So you have that six-month period. Um, yeah. And hopefully old Tiger will be a good hunter too. He's huge. Jeez, big. Uh, these guys, by the way, are just seven weeks old. Big dogs, huh? It's their mother's milk. Her, she weaned them at four weeks when I started feeding them a little bit of pellets. Um, she refused to know anything more from them. The moment that I started feeding them, she kind of rejected them, sadly. But for four weeks, they got excellent milk. Really good milk. Yeah, money's more, yeah.
Probably won't. Mm. Yeah, so that's that, guys. Good dog. Superstar dog with two blue eyes. And you know, neither the, the, uh, the bitch nor the sire, uh, the dam nor the sire, um, uh, have blue eyes. But again, Louis Hutton, master that he is of his craft, devoted practitioner of his craft as he is, predicted it. He said to me, Simon, I don't know what it is, but he said, I'm telling you, that litter is going to have blue-eyed dogs in it. And lo and behold, one with two blue eyes. He, in fact, I think he said one of the dogs will have one blue eye or something like that. And he was even more right than he thought he was. One has two blue eyes and one has one blue eye. Blue, 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 blue. <coughs> yes, yes, boy, I see you. Don't worry. You have to acknowledge their existence. It's very important to them emotionally. They want to be acknowledged. Um, and that's it, guys. Were we going to talk about anything else? I don't know. If you're on uh, my WhatsApp groups, then you know that choo, the world is going to hell in a handbasket. And it can't be stopped. And it doesn't matter what you think or what you believe. or. But the reality is that when the... When the system, when the insiders, when the mainstream tells you that the game is over, then the game is really over. Oh, what's going on here? Anyway, guys, we'll be in touch. We'll be talking lots and lots and lots and lots. I've started gardening. Would you believe that? No, no, yeah, okay, so I've been gardening in my garden for two years and two months. In fact, prior to buying this house, two years and two months ago, uh, I put down some seed, you know, when I knew I was going to get it, well, prior to the transfer, prior to taking occupation, I uh, put down some seed and I became a gardener for the first time in my life. I really only ever tinkered before and uh, I grew two crops of tomatoes or three crops of tomatoes and my sons grew some cucumbers in my garden once, but never anything more than that. But uh, I've been gardening, as those of you in Fonderkloof and in the Northern Cape know. Uh, those of you who drive past here on your way to uh, Opidek to uh, eat at Andre Kutsia's restaurant. Um, but now I've, I've started growing herbs. Yeah. I've got lavender, absolutely thriving. So is it at the ripe old age of 50, I'll have you know. Rosemary, thriving. Chili bushes, not so thriving. Um, thyme, not doing too badly. What's the stuff called? Sage, sage, sage. Got a nice sage bush. And the one with the red or the variegated red uh, flowers, if you're interested. Somebody asked me the other day which sort it was. And then I've got sweet basil, not the, not the bushy basil, normal sweet basil. Uh, I've got six sweet basil plants doing well. I'll say it again, at the ripe old age of 50. And uh, that's on top of all of the, the poplars, Lombardiensis, only Lombardiensis that I'm growing. You know the ones that grow in the shape of a cypress tree? The poplar trees that grow exactly in the shape of a cy cypress tree. <coughs> Those. Um, and uh, privets from Isaac and Christine. A gift from Isaac and Christine. Thank you, Isaac and Christine. 30 privet trees doing very well. Lawn doing very well. I'll say it again at the ripe old age of 50. I'm suddenly maturing shooting up i'm having a maturation spurt and um what else oh and i might i've had kathy uh, whitcomb and brian her son brian here to consult and advise i might even 
put in raised bids. And I think I know where I can get a tunnel for next to nothing. I don't know if I'm going to get uh, that much into it. Jeez, vegetable garden. I never thought I'd see the day. It has never appealed to me my entire life long. Woo! But here we're doing it. And we're even contemplating tunnel farming and raised beds. Yeah, I think I'm going to do it, guys. I think I'm going to do it. Oi, 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 oi. How times change. But we've got to, man. <laughs> 24 rand for three tomatoes. Pulling my leg. Uh -uh. No, we've got to do it. All right, guys. Speak soon. Now, we'll speak soon. God bless all of you. God bless you. Bye-bye.